Hi guys, I'm the Ember, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cool wavy animation with geometry nodes in Blender. So let's jump straight into it. Okay, so I've opened up Blender. I'm just going to get rid of this light, and I'm going to go straight over to geometry nodes. So I'm just going to select this cube, click new, and I'm going to delete the group input. I'm also going to enable snapping, it just makes all the nodes a bit neater. And then I'm going to press Shift A and add a grid node. And then we can just plug that in to the group output. So now you can see that we've got a grid. I'm going to add a instance on points node. And you can see that everything goes away, so we need some geometry to instance. So I'm going to add a cube. And plug the mesh into the instance. So now you can see that it's instancing one cube on each point. So we can just make this smaller and make the vertices more. And then we can make the size a bit bigger as well. That looks pretty good. And then we're just going to turn the size down again. Till there's no overlap like this so now we've got a big grid of cubes so now I'm going to add a set position I'm going to add a Vornoi texture put this here and I'll just move this over a bit and then I'm going to plug the distance into the offset of the set position and you can see that everything goes a bit crazy so I'm just going to change this from 3D to 40 and now we have this W factor that like moves everything but you can see if I go to side view that it's moving on all the axes I only want it to move on the Z axis so to fix that I'm going to add a combine XYZ and put that in between here and we want the distance to go into the Z so now if we play around with W, you can see it's only going up and down. I'm also going to turn this down. Like that. Okay. So I'm just going to reset this W to zero. I'm going to go down here and you can see there's a little crosshair. And then I'm just going to click and pull up. And that makes a new window. I'm just going to click this button here and change this to the timeline. So make sure you're at frame one. Hover over the W and press I. Then I'm going to go to frame 250. And we can just move this along. Let's go about, mm, let's say, 4. And then press I again. So that is animating now, which is pretty cool. Okay, this goes a little bit too slow. So I'm just going to go to the end. And I'll make this 5. And remember to click I again while you're hovering over it. So now I'm just going to press shift A and get a set material. And then we can just click in here and get the default material. Okay, so there's only one problem. You can see that these cubes aren't really beveled. I want some bevel around the edges here. So to do that, I'm just going to add a cube. Go to top view, press S. And scale this down to around about the same size as our other cubes. Now do the same thing for the Z axis. So now I've got my cube. I'm just going to press the slash button to isolate this object. Press Control A, apply the scale, and add a bevel modifier. Now that's a bit too much bevel, so we can turn the amount down. And I'll make the segments about four. Right click and shade auto smooth. So now they've got some nice bevel. We can press forward slash again to unisolate this object. And I'll just move this over to the side. I'm going to select our object again. Now we need to make this object as the instance object. So I'm going to just drag the second cube in and delete this cube right here. And I'll just plug the geometry into the instance. So there we go. 
Now we've got our beveled cube as the instance object. Okay, so now I'm going to add a material. I'm going to go up to the shading tab, select our main object, and it already has the material on it. So I'm just going to lower the roughness. Then I'm going to add a color ramp. Plug the color into the base color. I'm going to add a geometry node and plug the position into the color ramp. Then I'm going to add a mapping node and put that in between. And you can see that we've got this gradient. I'm just going to go to side view and we want it to be across like this instead of across like that. So this is where the mapping node comes in. I'm just going to play around with this rotation. And one thing you can do to make it easier to see where the gradient actually is, is just bring the black in and the white in, and it makes the line sharper. So now I'm just going to play around with this rotation. If you have the same problem as I do, where it's fully black, you're just going to change the Z location to around about here looks good. Mine's still a bit wonky, so you might need to play around with this till it looks pretty good. Now I'm just going to bring these in. I'm going to make this one a blue color. Put the black round about here. Now I'm going to add some more pins to the color ramp. So you can click this plus button here. I'm going to make this one a purple color. Bring it in. Make another one. This will be a pinkish color. I just had to adjust this mapping node a little bit because things were flipped the wrong way. So you can copy these settings if you followed along exactly. Now I'm just going to play around with these color ramp pins. And I'm just going to add a few more. This is looking pretty good. If you press play, you can see that this is dynamic and it looks really cool. So there's a bit too much black, so we can just change this a little bit and get less black. You can also play around with the colors till you've got something you really like. I think this looks pretty good. So now I'm just gonna change a few render settings. Going to go to the printer icon and you can click this icon over here and save this wherever you want. I'm also going to make this a FFmpeg video and make the encoding MPEG4. I'm going to go to the camera icon up here, turn on ambient occlusion, bloom, and screen space reflections. I'm going to go down to color management and change the look to high contrast. So you can see that this looks really cool. I'm just going to add another pin to the color ramp and make this a dark blue color. You can use any colors you want. I'm just going with sort of blues and purples. Okay, so this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Now I'm just going to go into the camera view. You can press this button over here. I'm going to press shift and the tilde key, which is the key right above the tab button. And now you're in fly mode and you can use WASD to move around. I'm just going to put this in a position I like. Okay, so I think this looks pretty good. So now I'm just going to go over to rented view by clicking this button up here and you can see that it looks very dark. I'm going to go over to the world properties and click this yellow dot right here. Then I'm going to click environment texture. And then I, I'm going to open the HDRI 
I'm going to have this HDRI linked in the description. Okay, so I've opened my HDRI and this looks pretty good. So one more thing before we render, you can see if you look through the slits here that we can kind of see the HDRI. So to fix that, I'm just going to add a mesh plane, move this down a little bit, press S to scale it up. And I'm just going to add a new material, turn the roughness pretty far down and make this black. Now you can see that we can only see black through here. So that's what I want. So now all we have to do to render this is go up to render and render animation. This might take a little while to render, but once this is finished, you'll have a really cool animation. If you want more content like this, please subscribe, and I hope you learned something and had fun, and I'll see you in the next one.